Hello, my name is Dmitry Savintsev. I'm from, I work for Yahoo, I work for the Paranoids, for the security team. I've been on Yahoo for a long, long time, actually since the beginning of the century. I've um, been doing the engineering, so the uh, just development of billing systems, infrastructure, and in the last years got the, in the security team. And my programming kind of biography follows the track of both industry and Yahoo development. So when I came, we've been still doing web application in C++ with all the Apache handlers and then lots of Perl, PHP, Python, Node.js, and in the last uh, months, uh, been doing Go. So this talk about uh, uh, some web application security in, in Go. Um, Web application se security, I, I haven't heard a lot of uh, information or experiences about the using Go in the security space. So some, there are some uh, programs like, for example, for encryption that, that uses, <laughs> but traditionally is uh, web application security people use a lot of uh, uh, Python, Ruby, and also Java. Some scanners are written in Java. So I would like to hope to change this and get a little bit more Go because I think it's a great language for, for the security. So I will talk about the, so the components of the scanner or what, what need not, not the whole thing because it's the work in progress, but some of the pieces that I was able to pick out. So the WebSec lab is a kind of a toolkit for making the test or for creating test for, for the scanner, then the contest de detects, that's the piece of the scanner that we've been running for the last months with good results, and talk about some of the CD and, and the next uh, plans. So about the web application security domain, this, I think it has two parts. One is it's like a specialized QA, so you, you're doing a lot of checks, so there's websites or the, there's products, and you have to look for them very carefully uh, with lots of attention to details and uh, trying to imagine all the perverse uh, bad ways that unexpected ways that your application can be used. But it's also enabling like helping developers. So you're both a police and a kind of servant. <laughs> uh, so you're doing like a consulting and training and uh, explaining and, uh, um, and F for that work, the automation is paramount uh, at scale when you have to do a lot. So you usually have a few guys and uh, hundreds of thousands of developers. So the ratio of coders to paranoids is, uh, uh, requires uh, automation. And you also do have to do a lot of tools. Uh, um, tools are at the course. And what we found out that you, we need custom tools, so it's not enough just to take uh, something that's available on, on the market or in the open source, you end up making them because also things change, you need to adapt, you have to um, create your own. So we run our own sc scanner, so my kind of uh, specialty uh, at Yahoo is uh, maintaining and developing XSS scanner, so well, our part of the scanning system that is uh, targeted at XSS and uh, related things. Um, and that's what takes a lot of time to create a scanner and uh, to be able to scan all the sites all the time. That's our <coughs> purpose, uh, our uh, kind of dream, so that we scan in all the production sites as well as all the sites that are coming from the CD pipeline or fire holes, you can say. Well. I really got to like go and uh, I could sign up if you've seen it dot uh, go Andrew Stalker uh, why he liked go so I, it's a lot of things that uh, I feel as well um, starting from go format uh, that's that was relevation that's exactly I think how how it should work but especially for tools development and not just for so for ops and so the advantage is that this easy to deploy with static libraries. You don't have this dependency hell. There's usually less or no, uh, runtime errors, undefined functions, or undefined symbol. You have the whole build chains or the compiler. Um, 
dependencies are also written down and the test facilities are right there. So it's uh, when you have the test files, so you have like file and then this file underscore go when they are uh, placed together, then it uh, stimulates people to write, uh, to write good tests or at least write some tests. And when you look at reviewing the code, if you see that there are no dust underscore test files, then there's something wrong. And especially for web security tools, uh, adventures are that the great HTTP stack and the whole network, uh, kind of the batteries included. Of course, concurrency and performance are important when you have to scan um, many thousands of sites and, and do it in reasonable time. Uh, what I like for the just general tools is that it's easy to make a web GUI. So usually you do, do a tool and do a command line interface, but if you need or if you prefer something nice or want to give a user something nice, it's uh, almost trivial to put a wrapper around the functionality. And especially for the security tools where I think Go has or provides a feature what I call abstraction elevator. So you could change the level of abstraction. You could normally program at a relatively high level, like almost like with the scripting languages. But if you need to go f further, go down, so you could go all the way to the package shifting or to, to those network primitives and rewrite or modify them. So at, at times it comes. Well. So our first, I won't talk a lot about this, but kind of the first deep, uh, deep in the toes project was the dead link crawler. Uh, that was my learning project uh, of free time project. Uh, uh, I thought about then kind of getting a feel whether it would be appropriate for a web security scanner eventually and uh, took a very simple task just finding dead links and uh, when you have lots of sites so uh, they come from uh, 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 periodically and so and uh, it worked very well it was able to plow through thousands of Yahoo sites, I made specifically just <laughs> for yahoo.com and flew uh, a couple of other domains like Flickr and Tumblr. Um, it found a couple of dozens of bad links that then we fixed, something like maybe two clicks from the home pages. Uh, I would, uh, it's hard to imagine how it can be found manually, so <laughs> uh, the, you need to do this kind of tools. And when they fixed, it's better user experience. and. Uh, but the colleagues were kind of excited. Some people told me that that's a great uh, job and that's good when you're trying to introduce or start a boots, bootstrap a new language uh, at a corporation. Um, it was running at like 100 uh, stable concurrent jobs. And I ran, I ran for, for a few hours before killing it. And the memory consumption kind of peaked uh, around 3 gigabytes and then was slowly increasing this. Because with the crawler like this, you have to keep a map of the visited links and, and that it, it grows. But uh, I was surprised that it was quite solid and stable and finding good stuff. So some of the lessons, uh, beginner rookie lessons, you, you really you find out fast that you need to close the body, otherwise <laughs> it goes south. The U limit needs to be increased. Uh, and also I found that kind of the sweet spot is somewhere between 100 and 300 uh, um, go routines that, uh, that go uh, in parallel. Because when I try to do like a thousand, then I, I was getting DNS servers that could be a setup of the, of the local uh, DNS server. So um, you can talk about the website club. So one, the the topic came up again again when we were working on the security scanner, that or in general on, on kind of working with security issues and uh, trying you know, helping people. We needed uh, things so that we could put together tests quickly or have a test suite for the scanner, so all the co corner cases, because we cannot wait until this uh, obscure bug will come next time. So we, we have to have it like all saved. And uh, there were several iterations, not just myself and, and teammates. Uh, usually we were just some kind of ad hoc PHP scripts. Then there was an application that was kind of a mimic of a small copy of Twitter, but with insecurity. And th then I wrote uh, YSEC Lab that was uh, similar to what I show, but in Node.js. Um, but then when I discovered Go, I said that's the right thing and that's what I, I want, want to use it. So I wrote a set of tests uh, in, in Go. 
it is a site for testing web security scanners such as XSS scanners and in that is similar to recently uh, I've, I think the idea was in the air um, Google uh, open source firing range so it's a uh, um, similar idea but it's uh, in Java um, and I also think about this uh, not just a site that has a few pages or, or that are vulnerable but also a toolkit for constructing new tests so that it's uh, would be uh, um, uh, easy to, when, when you need to explore something or show or replicate so that you could put a new test one. So, so and use it for replication of real use cases, like we have a bug, bug bounty program. So, and our, or from the stage of production, when we find something, I try to put like a model or distilled a minimal version in WebSec Lab so that I could keep it for the, for the scanners. So. The requirements are, uh, many cases are like a standard one, so you get an input, the input is not filtered or filtered incorrectly, and it goes into output. Um, and so input with no wrong filtering. But the badness, so the, the output, it has to be tightly controlled, so we cannot just put a um, unfiltered output everywhere because then it will uh, trigger all the all the tests so for the test isolation they had to be separate and some of the tests are special so for example the HTTP response uh, splitting or referring injection they are not like other just uh, bad input filtering um, in Go so this uh, I can make convention that the input comes at the in CGI variable so that you keep it the same and except the special cases and uh, and there are filters that uh, convert the input value uh, I'll show the code and so the some of the convention that uh, um, if it ends with that okay then we turn off badness and I'll show how, how it's uh, it actually use go fetch for this and if it ends with underscore of p then it's a false positive that's another thing that you have to check a lot f with the scanner so if uh, if the scanner is too no noisy if it produces false positives so false alarms when you do scanning at scale it will kill the output it will drone the signal in noise and any users will just uh, be uh, put off by that so it's a you can think about this uh, I realized when, when I've done this it's a special purpose uh, web mini framework so it's uh, has a place where it picks up the templates, so it uses Go templates. But of course, it uses text templates uh, so that uh, we could do the, the bad output. Uh, it has some library of uh, filtering, um, and uh, it has the filtering has standard uh, blocks. So, for example, tags off or on. So, if it's tags off, then we filter all the tag characters, or double quotes on and off. Uh, so that you w whether it goes through or not. So <coughs> here's the, so, um, uh, so for example, yeah, th those uh, codes. So first when I was writing this, I, I was trying to do this all in, in functions that just for each combination of this, I was doing like a function and I had function do quotes of uh, with uh, <coughs> um, uh, spaces, no tags, and it's kind of a, combinatorial explosion there was a lot of code duplication so then I got this one and I got um, um, the ba based on this the, there's a transform function that combines them and applies uh, uh, those filters in sequence so that you could just specify uh, a set of those uh, and get the corresponding input filtering and here's an example of uh, custom processing that uh, it doesn't come often but there was a bug where the escape to the backslash x would be converted to the, the normal characters so that's the the function just uh, undoes it so this kind of a corner case so we'll because uh, uh, this can be done for replicating badness so where if we find a like bug or okay so internal uh, stand then we could just paste the template, set filters, and have a, have a new case. And also, it allows to see the issue in the realistic setting. So if you grab the HTML from the production kind of scan, then, then we have a test with the real, um, 
real HTML. But it also, what I really like about this, it can be used to resurrect badness. So for example, if it's from bug bounty program, and uh, there was an issue, our developers sometimes are very fast to fix it. So they fix it before I, I get to this or before I wake up. So earlier I had to ask them, could you please put the old vulnerable version on a test server so that I could check it with my scanner. And this uh, was an awkward thing to do because developers have other more important things to do than put the old versions uh, somewhere. So now we do this way. Our incidents response team, when they try the, those uh, issues, they save the um, output and add it to the bug. And then even if it's fixed, I, I grab this uh, dump HTML dump, convert it to Waxif lab test and uh, um, put it, uh, then, then ca I can play it with it as much as I can. Okay, so let's uh, try demo. Um, that's uh, the page, so I put a bunch of those. Um, so for example, the classic is uh, uh, the, the full JavaScript. It's like the, when there's no, no escaping. Um, and we just put alert. And so it works. So um, um, or there's, uh, there's uh, the post one. It's also special, so there's uh, um, most of the case with uh, with get because it's sufficient to check the output handling, but you need to check this as well. So if you, let's say you get image source equal foo and arrow <coughs> equal alert hacked. Script. That's uh, image. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. You you need to close there this one. Yeah. Uh, the, there are some cases like, for example, on mouse uh, on mouse over. Uh, let's check one of those. Uh, 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 on mouse over. So we could take a look at the, so it's uh, in the source, it's uh, values in, in input. Oh, okay. Anyway. <coughs> Injection. On mouse. See if this works. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, let's. Uh, it has to go here. Ah. Uh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, sorry. Um.
let us try this one the JavaScript injection. So put it here. So this injection in JavaScript, uh, and we could see the source uh, this is. Uh, in the JavaScript block, it puts this, uh, um, uh, the uh, in injects the code that, that gets executed. Um, so um, we want to open source this, so, uh, and I'll so okay, so it's now um, public, and uh, um, there's a description in the the readme on the tests. I hope that it would be useful for the like um, consultants and the people who, not only to develop the scanners, but uh, people who uh, work with the like uh, doing pen testing and can they can copy uh, or make the tests from from the uh, website lab. Okay. Um, the next uh, piece that I want to talk is the context the text. So that's actually in the XSS scanner uh, is uh, the, the piece that responsible for the analysis of the output. So there's uh, usually the scanners, they send some fuzzing str string to the um, site. Uh, it returns output and then you need to analyze it. So Previously, we had uh, lots of regular expressions and the custom scripting. Um, this, um, for example, and that got difficult to understand uh, and uh, quite fragile. And there were still lots of uh, false positives and false negatives. Then we modified it to use the to use Go and uh, we used HTML5 parser um, for for analysis. So the uh, and it worked. Uh, so it HTML5 parser has the tokenizer and the the, the high level the, the parser interface. We used the, the parser and it defines the or verifies the context of injections uh, and uh, this way we can. The different injections, they may be innocuous if they, for example, in the quoted, uh, properly quoted stream, or they may can be uh, bad or can be uh, um, dangerous uh, in, in different con contexts. Um, we also use the um, con uh, JavaScript parser from Robert Kriemann. Um, to check whether injections uh, breaks JavaScript or not. We've seen the example uh, previously that was uh, injection in JavaScript. So usually when you're sending the fuzzing script, you're not sending just some like a number so um, alert, but uh, some special characters and if it gets injected inside of JavaScript, it usually breaks the uh, block of the JavaScript and makes it impossible. And by this detection, we can see if it's uh, uh, almost emulate the browser and see whether the injection will. Uh, and if it breaks JavaScript, then it's likely to be exploitable uh, because then you can put your own stuff, your, your, your own script. So you basically you're kind of broken the sandbox there in the. The normal kind of the rule that the input shouldn't leave the the same context uh, uh, when when being output. So here's how it's done. We have the function check JavaScript. Uh, um, we need to do some mapping because of the the comments uh, the browser. So we 
um, kind of imitate with replacing this uh, uh, the comments, uh, re removing them, um, and then we call the uh, pass file from autoparser and see if it returns an, an error, uh, then it must uh, some must be broken, and it's like the injection broke that. Uh, not then we return null. So and we could also from the pass we could check if. Uh, 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 for example, if just kind of innocuous stream, if it ju doesn't break, but the something with uh, uh, with the curly brackets breaks uh, or with the given injection, then it must be bad. So some of results that we reduced the false positive rate uh, in in the scanner to new zero to almost zero, and that was a big relief both for us paranoids who. Uh, uh, have to deal with the output and try try this, and also the developers and QAs who who use this, and it's still finding the real issues as we check with the web website lab. Uh, also improved output because we can take the relevant parts from the from just not uh, the, from the from the conflict, the previous context part uh, the of, of the breakage. Um, um, the, the scanner with context detects was able uh, actually is now part of the CD pipeline and it scans all the sites uh, that go from developers to all the websites that go out. So you uh, can say that Go has a role to play in keeping security lots of Yahoo sites. Um, um, for the scanner system, we also had the distributed system with web services interface and uh, multiple redundant workers that actually do the, the scanning. So this uh, is a web, web server that uh, provides the fr web service fr front end, takes a request and then multiplies it to one of the workers. Um, the, that part is also done in Go. Uh, and uh, we use also the scan test. And uh, I once you work with Go, I actually found that it's convenient for the functional testing. So you do Go test and put a build block on, on the functional, and it's uh, worked quite well. So some of the thought that with dependency management in, in a corporation environment, of course, we have to pin the third party dependencies. And personally, I prefer, would like to limit the code in the rep my repository to my code so that uh, it wouldn't have like all the all uh, dependent libraries locally. It's maybe necessary in kind of outside, but we have trust that we uh, like our mirrors will not go down, or they have uh, proper replication. And uh, go this uh, idea that uh, there shouldn't be uh, config files, uh, um, uh, but uh, if if we want to uh, pin the third party dependency, then we are willing to compromise on the no config uh, files ideal. Um, one of ideas or thing that we explored is using Android Rapper tool. That's a tool for management a lot uh, number of uh, dependencies. Uh, so it requires a manifest a default that XML that specifies like the sources and, and the paths, and it fetches the whole projects. It can be used to lay out the workspace and map wrappers to to the paths. Um, we used it for, for a few months, and uh, so there are some advantages, like, for example, default.xml um, introduces at a glance documentation and it uh, shows you all the dependencies in one place. Um, and also, our CD system has a nice feature that if the dependencies change in, in, in default.xml, then it rebuilds uh, your, uh, it triggers your build. It wasn't done for Go, it was done for, uh, 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 for Android libraries, but we reused it and it came to be very useful. Um, and now we are thinking about, so I like default.xml because then I don't have to invent uh, uh, or uh, wrap a manifest uh, to invent a custom format. Um, uh, 
and it's something that some, some developers know already. So we're thinking about like doing it, maybe generating automatically with Go list so that then you can change only the like versions, put the revision if you want to pin certain libraries. And it can be also maybe filled by the CD system automatically. So the ne next steps uh, um, expand the context detector and convert also to the full Go scanner. Currently, it's uh, like uh, some of legacy piece pieces that interact with, with Go and share it with web security com community to promote Go among security people. And also, I'd like to hope to publish the Deadlink scanner. So in we found that Go is excellent foundation for security tools and also it runs, it's very stable for large scale systems. So I, like the, the, our scanning in CD system, it's been running for weeks and uh, I've been going like on vacation sabbatical and it was uh, still running surprisingly stable and uh, um, my teammates also appreciate this. If sometimes people say that Go is boring, so I, I think it's one part where boredom or Go being boring is great when it operates and just runs and runs and runs. And there's a lot of uh, room for innovation and potential for the uh, col collaboration of web security and Go community. So if you're interested in doing this, pin me or let, let me know so maybe we can uh, cooperate. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? I think it's DNS, it depends on the DNS servers. If you use the glibc resolver, they have ah. nothing bugs. So if you use the pure oh, yeah. Go, if you build your Go binary with net Go, use the pure Go DNS one, you can do as many as you want. Okay. So it has nothing to do with... Okay, so I, I should try, so I try to rebuild it with... Yeah, with the, the glibc bug is fixed in... I, I've seen it, yeah. Well, it's, you know, C programmers don't use concurrency much. <laughs> no, I mean, like, so there's, there's really just a latent uh, a data race bug in glibc in the threading, so. Mm. Well, why is it the default? So in Go 1.5, we're thinking of making it the default if you don't have a, a weird etc resolve comp in nsglibc.com. So we're going to try to detect, like, you're not doing anything fancy, and we mm. don't really need the glibc. Why do you need glibc, though? Because, unfortunately, distributions and operating system vendors cram a lot of smarts into glibc and just putting it in the kernel or something. And so, for instance, on OS X, um, if you have a firewall, you can't resolve DNS because it won't open the port to receive the UDP packet back. And so G the glibc one bypasses the firewall. And there are similar stories on Linux. Well, not glibc on, li on Darwin. Like oh, li libc, yeah, wherever yeah. it is. But on, on Linux, we have to do it because a lot of like weird enterprises have like LDAP lookups for something or like weird weird special policy for like how things work. It's only at the libc level. So. Okay. Sure. Well, the JavaScript is uh, standardized, uh, so when when we're just checking the, the JavaScript, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, you could even, like, on, on the command in Node and JS, if, if, if JavaScript is malformed, uh, then it's uh, malformed. I think the way the browsers now pick up those script pieces because of the HTML5 parsing algorithm is relatively standard, so I, I, I think it's, uh, I think it works and it doesn't depend so much on browsers. So, it's But of course for the scanning there are two levels. One is the just the simple HTTP and the other is with the browser automation. That's a d different story. So. Yeah.